So now that we have our lobby framed out in steel, uh, we need to place in some joists so that we can put a floor on top of this. Um, and we don't want to floor everywhere, actually that's the purpose of having these sort of openings. Uh, so we're going to focus on this area. Now joists can be created in a couple of manners. Joists are technically just beams, they're versions of beams. If you go to structure, we can load in um, a beam here and I'll show you how to do that in a second. We can also, um, because there are probably going to be a lot of these, we can create uh, what are called beam systems. Um, now beam systems are sort of a series of beams all together based on a perimeter and uh, a parameter that is either a maximum distance between the joists or a total number of joists. So let's start by loading in a joist here. Let's go to beam and load family and we need to go up. Actually if you're in steel framing you can stay in steel framing and we want to find these K these K series joists. So we're going to use um, the K series angles and we're going to open it and again you have a lot of things to choose from. So the first um, notation is the depth, the total depth in inches. Um, and then it is uh, related to the profile, so um, how the, the the joints, or sorry, the, the bars or the angles are laid out. Um, so let's scroll down here to a, um, let's see, uh, let's go for uh, an 18 inch. Um, so we're not really concerned with the last number, which has to do with the thickness of the, the steel um, or the area, actually, of the steel. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, just choose something in the middle, like an 18.6. And so here you can see that there is a K-series bar joist that's loaded. If we edit its type, you can see where the, um, the parameters come from. And uh, we can change this again, but if you need to create a different version, um, just go ahead and load in a new series with the correct number up front. So you can create these like normal. I'll show you, um, oh sorry, like normal beams. Um, I'll show you what happens here when you draw in a beam or when you draw in a joist. If you go to the structure, you can see that uh, essentially it's a it's a joist that's sort of hanging on to two edges. And if we look over here, that's not in concrete. This is what we're going to assume for the class. These will be um, sort of welded um, onto in, into the, um, they're going to be absorbed into the, the beams. And this is not really what happens, but to simplify what, what uh, the class is about, we're just going to end these flush at the same level. Now the, the, the floor is going to have to be adjusted and I'll show you how to do that later. But let's go back to level two here. And um, that is how you can create joists. Again, you can copy. And I recommend um, sticking with the midpoint. So if we create this joist again, try and choose the center line of this beam so that you know the, the, the end of this sort of hook will be, um, will be all the way um, in the, the beam. Um, so you can copy these, you can array these, um, whatever you want to do. You can also change their, their um, C value um, over here, just like regular beams. Let's go ahead and talk about beam systems now. So beam systems, if I click this button, I have a few options that pop up. The first is an automatic beam system versus a sketch. I'll go through the automatic beam system first. Um, here under the modifications, we can choose what type of beam is going to be in this system. So we want to change it to the 18K um, joist. Uh, we can choose their justification, whether that's the, the um, beginning or end, which is based on this layout rule. Um, and our layout rule now is currently a fixed distance. And I'll show you the difference between these different rules later. And that fixed distance is currently six feet. If I hover over a region that's totally framed out, so that means it has beams on all sides, I can sort of change between the direction here and you can see that uh, what pops up in green is uh, a beam system. If I click this, it's going to populate with these joists. 
If we go to a 3D view here, you can see that these have successfully been put in based on a particular rule. Now if I hover over the edge here in either a 3D or a 2D view, I can select the beam system. So here you can see structural beam system. And I can change some of these rules. So for instance, fixed distance versus fixed number. So they were once at six um, feet. Now there are six total. Um, uh, a really nice one for this class is probably going to be maximum spacing. So if we figure that you know the decking can only span five feet, then we want our maximum spacing to be five feet. And what that allows us to do is um, choose the number that's closest to, to five feet to, to span. If I go back to a 2D view, I can actually edit the boundary of this thing and I can expand it if I want. If I hit check there, you can see that it sort of ignores this because the sketch sort of ignored that. If I go back to a 3D view, you can see that it keeps on populating. Whenever you run up to a beam like this though, I would keep this as a different beam um, system. You can change the beam direction too after the fact. Um, here you can see these two parallel lines and that denotes the beam direction, the span direction. So you can see which way the, the, the joists are going. And I can switch that. If I do, you can see that they're going to switch their direction. Um, so let's go ahead and hit check here. And just for an example, let's fill in this lobby. So I'm going to go to architecture, or sorry, I'm going to go to structure beam system and we're going to um, draw a sketch. So I don't have to actually select anything. Uh, I don't have to frame anything out first. I can just draw in a sketch. We can change this later, keep in mind. And the beam system, or sorry, the beam direction will auto populate. I'm going to change it to this direction. I'm going to hit check. And here you can see that this has been populated with, um, with joists. And again, we can hover over it and we can um, select the uh, pattern to change to. So if our maximum span is five feet, for instance, then we know that our decking is going to successfully span these, um, this region. We're not so concerned, again, with how this um, sort of welds into the concrete. And you can see that these are flush. And we're going to talk about um, changing this uh, for, for the decking. We actually are going to bring both of our beams and our joists um, down so that the decking can sort of end flush or, or bring it up if we need to. So that's not um, like concrete where it can sort of all be absorbed. Steel is very tectonic. It's very, it's made of sort of stick members. Um, so that will be the, the next tutorial. Um, you can also select these and unpin them. Now they are uh, sort of fixed uh, for a reason. They pin because they're part of a beam system and you can't delete them by default. You have to unpin them and then you can delete them if you want to get rid of a single member. Though it's not you know, the greatest idea unless it's a very particular instance. Um, you could change actually a single member um, by selecting the single member using tab or you can select the beam system and change this to like a hollow steel as well. But um, for right now, we're gonna we're gonna stick with the joist and beam system. So if you're in a 3D view uh, and you look at these joists, you can see that they're actually not filled with anything. These are just representations of uh, the angles. And if we change it to a fine mode, you can see that it fills it in. Um, I would recommend staying in a medium mode because it's gonna start to tax your um, computer more. And later, when we do some rendering, we actually might keep this as a medium um, mode because uh, when you zoom out, it gets a little bit hard to see all of the elements. They get a little bit thick.